Applications of Circular Functions <clears throat> A wheel is mounted on a wall and rotates such that the distance of a particular point on the wheel from the ground at any point is given by the rule d equals 100 minus 60 cos 4 pi over 3t, where t is the time in seconds. Now, in these application questions, you're going to get a lot of questions that ask several bits. The easiest thing by far is to draw a graph to start with of what you can. So, marking in my um, axes here. Now notice the um, vertical translation is 100. That's your vertical translation there. So let's mark in 100. Minus 60 cos 4 pi on 3t. Always nice when you see a pi in front of the t because you know that the period's going to be a whole number. So the period equals 2 pi on n, so 2 pi over 4 pi on 3. So that's 2 pi on 1, turn the fraction upside down by 3 on 4 pi. Pi's cancel out. 3, 2 to 6, so you've got 6 on 4, so your period is 3 over 2. So this wheel is obviously turning at um, quite a quick rate. Okay, if the wheel turns, has a period of 3 on 2 seconds, then um, that's obviously quite quick. So that's half of that is 3 over 4, half that again is 3 over 8. So we've got 3 over 8, 6 over 8, 9 over 8, and 3 over 2. <clears throat> this is D, so just trying to get your letters right. And that's in centimetres. And our time is in seconds. All right, so um, this is a negative cos graph. So the amplitude is 60. So 100 minus 60 is 40. And 100 plus 60 is 160. And because it's a, um, a negative cos graph, it starts at the bottom and then goes up like that. So just marking in at this stage, all I've done is mark in one period. Okay. All right. So at t equals zero, so now I'll answer the questions. At t equals zero, how far is the distance? How far is the wheel above the ground or the point P? And obviously it's 40 meters. So at t equals zero, so d of zero is equal to 40 centimetres. B, and you can see because I've done all the work how easy it is to actually answer the questions. How long does it take for the wheel to rotate? Well, it takes, it's got a period of um, three on two, so it takes three on two seconds. 1.5 seconds. Either is okay. Find the maximum and minimum distances of the point P above the ground. Well, the maximum is always the vertical translation plus the amplitude. So it'll be, so your maximum is 100 plus 60 equals 160 meters, oh, 160 centimeters. And the minimum is the vertical translation minus the amplitude. So that's 40 centimetres. D, done. Sketch the graph. Better finish that off seeing I'm doing a sketch. Make sure that's got all the, the right units in. Uh, time is in seconds. And E, what 
we got for E. In the first rotation, find the intervals of time where P is less than 70 centimetres above the ground. So let's mark in 70 centimetres, which is halfway between 40 and 100. Do our little dotted line across. And we can see that's got to come down like this. So, and what we have to do is find those times. So what do we know? I might just move E over to here. And we'll do that here. So we know that 70 is the distance is equal to 100 minus 60 cos 4 pi on 3t. So we have 60 moving the whole cos term across, 60 cos 4 pi on 3t is equal to 100 minus 70, which is 30. Divide by 60 and you'll get a half. 30 on 60 is a half. So 4 pi on 3t is cos to the minus one of a half. All right, so a special triangle, two, one, root three. You want, um, you want the adjacent to be one, so we're talking about that angle in there, so that's pi on three. So four pi on three t is equal to pi on three, and of course, where else is cos positive? And cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. So use two pi minus pi on three. So six pi on three minus pi on three is five pi on three. So there, you can see you've only got two values, so they're gonna be your two values, and now we just need to solve for t. So t equals pi on three, times 3 on 4 pi and the other value is 5 pi on 3 times 3 on 4 pi just getting the t by itself pi's cancel out, 3's cancel out so t is equal to a quarter and 3's cancel out, pi's cancel out and you get 5 on 4 so t is equal to 0.25 seconds. Uh, sorry, I'll make sure I answer the question. I didn't actually answer the question there. It says, uh, find the intervals of time when the point p is less than 70. So we're after the intervals of time. So we're after between here, that's a quarter there. We're up there, that's where it's less, and we're there. So this is in the first rotation, so just make sure you express your answer as they ask it. So we know that T is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to a quarter. Um, it says less than, so it's not an equals there. which less than 70, so that's just a, um, that's just a less than sign. And for the second one, T will be, so we'll have union, so we'll have that interval there. Union, T is greater than five on four. So this was five on four here. and less than or equal to three on two. So you do really need to watch your signs on those ones. All right, <clears throat> example 39. And you get a lot of these type of problems with tides. So it's suggested that the height of the tide above mean sea level on the 1st of January and 
also note the dates, okay? Because um, they're like where you start from. Uh, at Warnung is given by this rule, H of t equals four sine pi on six t, where t is the number of hours after midnight. Now, note, this is the average sea level, so because it says it's the mean sea level. Sometimes they'll have a vertical translation in these questions, sometimes they won't. And this one looks like it doesn't. So I'm gonna do what I did before. Not worry about any of the questions until I've got a graph up. So, amplitude is four. Period is, and again, I love it when I see that pi in front of the T, um, period odd, period. Um, because then you know you're gonna have a whole number. So period's two pi on pi on six equals 12. We're asked to draw to, um, two pi, um, to 24 hours. So we're gonna have two periods in this one. So break your period into four, six, Three, three is your counting unit, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So this is number of hours. So T is number of hours after midnight. This is the height. So remember, that's the mean height of the tide. <clears throat> so your amplitude was four meters above. So we'll go between four and minus four and sketch in our sine graph. So pretty straightforward. This one, no little tricks. I still always like to draw in one period Make sure I get that in the right spot and then mark in the second period. Or third period or however many periods there are. Now, um, because I'm sketching a graph, I really should be... If I, uh, I really should be marking those in endpoints in if I'm asked to sketch the graph. So I won't until I actually read it in the question. Okay. A, you'll find most of the answers just appear once you've done that. I'll draw the graph of H of T and T is between 0 and 24. So I will just mark in those endpoints now. Um, just a couple of things I'm gonna to add to this. So that'll be 24, zero. This will be, um, and I'm, I am checking the domain to see the less than or equal signs are there so that they're not open circles. So that's obviously um, zero, zero. I should be marking in these maximums too. Four, zero, 15, zero, 15, zero. Where are you going? Try that again. I think I'm going mad. Probably true. Three, four would be better. 15, four. 9 minus 4, 21 minus 4. Okay, so A, sketch the graph, C above. Notice that pun there, C above, when we're doing a graph of the tides and the C. Stop shaking your heads. B, when was high tide? So high tide was at, so it's at three hours after midnight. So it's at 3 a.m. And 15 hours is um, 3 p.m., 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. on the 1st of January. What is the height of the high tide? 
well it's the it's four meters above mean level above mean sea level D What was the height of the tide at 8 a.m.? So now we're going to have to do some calculation. So I might just write that graph because I'm going to scroll down where I can actually see it. H of t equals 4 sine pi on 6t. So what was the height at 8 a.m.? So h of at 8 a.m. it's 8 hours after midnight. So that means h of 8 is equal to 4 sine 8 pi on 6. 8 pi on 6 is 4 pi on 3. Equals. So what's the sine of 4 pi on 3? So remember if you're doing um, 4 pi on 3, 4, 4 pi on 3 is 1 and 1 third pi, so it's round here. So that angle there is 4 pi on 3. It's actually um, not in a very good location there. Might fix that up, it'd be more round here. So that's 4 pi on 3 all the way around there. That's horrible. Let's rub that out, do that again. Make it actually look like it should. So there's 4 pi on 3, that's better. So sine of 4 pi on 3. Remember that's just going to be the equivalent first quadrant angle, so that's going to be sine of pi on 3, because that, ang that angle in there is pi on 3 and sine's the vertical distance. So it's sine of pi on 3, but of course um, it's negative because sine in the third quadrant is negative and if you were remembering that sine is the vertical distance, the vertical distance is negative. So the sine of pi on, th of pi on 3 is a um, special triangle, 2, 1, root 3. There's pi on 3, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's root 3 on 2. Hopefully you're knowing those by now and not having to look too much. So continuing our work here, so that becomes 4 sine of 4 pi on 3 is 4 times negative root 3 on 2. Equals minus 2 root 3. So what was the height of the tide at 8am? Uh, so it is, to answer the question, it's 2 root 3 metres below, below the mean sea level. Just making sure always I answer it. And part E, usually the tricky one. It says a boat can only access the harbour bar when the tide is at least one metre above the main sea level. Here we go. So draw in your one metre above. So there's one. So we'll draw in that one all the way through there. And what we're looking for is there and there. And obviously there and there. Now, because the period for this is 12 hours, you don't need to work out all four values because you know when you work out this value, this value is 12 hours later. So um, just sort of keep that in mind as you're working through these. So the boat can only cross the harbour when the tide is at least one metre above the mean sea level. When could the boat cross the harbour on the 1st of January? So anywhere in this time, and anywhere in this time is where we're above one metre. So first thing we have to do is solve when we are above one metre. So one is equal to 
4 sine pi on 6t. So you've got a quarter equals sine pi on 6t. Pi on 6t is equal to sine to the minus 1 of a quarter. So pi on 6t. Now sine to the minus 1 of a quarter, you'll need your calculator in radians and do a control equals to get it as a, a value that makes sense. So it's 0.2527. That's your first quadrant. That's how many radians it is. And to get your second quadrant angle, um, you'll need to do um, your second, in the second quadrant, um, theta's pi, sorry, the angle is pi minus theta. So you need to do pi minus what you had before. So pi minus 0.258 is 2.8889. So this one was, if you like, theta, that's pi minus theta. Um, and so t is equal to, so now you need to take each of those, times them by six and divide by pi. So if I um, do the first one, times by six, divide by pi. If I can find the pi button on my calculator here. And you should get 0 0.482, 0 0.4826. And do the same thing with the second. So times by six and divide by pi. And you get 5.517. Now, they should sort of make sense where they fit in on the graph. So if you look here, this value here is 0.48. That looks pretty good because it's pretty small. And this one was 5.52, rounding them, of course. So now, sort of let's try and convert those um, into, um, into, into a more meaningful unit. So if you've got 0.4826 hours, so if you take 0.4826 uh, and you just times it by 60, you'll get 28.95, so let's go 29 minutes. So this is at, um, to the nearest minute I'm doing this. So this is at 29 minutes. So this is what t is equal to. Uh, maybe I'll just rub that out and do that a little neater. So t is equal to 29 minutes. Or now to do the second part, take the 5.5172. We know it's five hours, so minus the five to get the decimal, and then times by 60 to get how many minutes. So or five hours. 31 minutes. So to answer the question, so when can the boat access the harbour? So, and I'm seeing it, I'm now reading it carefully. It says when it is at least one metre. So that means we actually include the 29 minutes. So um, T will be will be greater than or equal to 29 minutes so writing that in um, in 24 hour time so we can just go 0 0 29 which is less than or equal to 0 5 31 and then union and then it happens again 12 hours later so 12 hours later would make that in 24 hour time 12.29 is less than or equal to t 12 and 5 is and 17.31 now you get lots of application questions these are the questions that appear on the exams always there is always a big trick question um, you do absolutely as many of this exercise as you can
So have fun.